Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2013 Advanced. In this section I'm going to look at linking to tables in other Access databases. Given that Access has been with us for quite a long time now, in its early days it's worth remembering that primarily it was used as a pretty much completely self-contained desktop database system. The forms, the reports, the queries, the tables all sat in a single file and a desktop user could basically maintain a database of some type of information and Access became very popular. Now as time has gone by it has become more necessary for Access to accept some of the broader requirements particularly in use in business and amongst these is the ability to share data very few significant database systems now are completely self-contained. There is almost always an element of interaction with other database systems and once you've got some useful data in a database you can be pretty certain that other people are going to want access to that data. Let's think of the Northwind Traders database for example. Although there's not a huge amount of data in it you can see that some of the information in it is very important. It's got a list of customers it's got a list of purchase orders and invoices and so on. You may well find that you need to interface that to your accounting system or as in the example I'm going to use here if you decided to create a customer relationship management system, a CRM system you may want to use some of the data that is in the Northwind Traders database and in particular I'm going to assume in this that we want access to the customer data so I'm going to assume for the purposes of this section that we're going to create a new database, a customer relationship management database, CRM database, CRM1.actDB. It's in my scratch folder. And this is going to be the first demonstration of creating a database where we're actually using some data from a different database, a different access database. If you've only so far in your experience used self-contained access databases, this is the first step towards beginning to spread what access is using out. In a couple of sections time we're going to look at splitting an access database to separate the data from the user interface components. This is if you like a little bit of practice to begin with. So I click on create for a blank desktop database and there we are. Now all I'm going to have in my CRM database to begin with is a table called customer contact and this is basically going to contain records. Each record corresponds to one customer contact basic information in a customer contact record to begin with first of all the ID of the contact secondly the type of contact which will be perhaps email or telephone or meeting the date the contact took place and then some brief notes on what happened now I'm sure you know how to create tables in Access 2013 so I'm going to quickly create that table now join me again in just a moment so I've defined the table, uh, table customer contact. The first field in the table is an auto numbered primary key for the table itself. So customer contact ID will uniquely identify every customer contact. The second field in the table is the customer ID. Now clearly I only want this to be an ID of an existing customer and I'm not going to set up customers in this access database. I'm going to link to the customer table in the Northwind Traders database. So that's the next thing to do. So let me just close the customer contact table saving the changes. Now I go to external data and click on access. Now first of all I need to find the access database that I want to use. I'm going to browse to my scratch folder which is where I've saved the Northwind Traders database. A word of warning here and I'll talk about this a little bit more later on. One of the eternal problems with linking access databases to each other or in fact to other sources as well is locating them. If you move something then you tend to finish up with a certain amount of grief getting things to work again. I'm going to generally work here in my scratch folder. When you're doing the exercises on this course or indeed when you're working in general and linking access databases it's always best if you can avoid moving things around. 
I'd even suggest in relation to the course just working in one folder when you're doing all of this and then you'll largely remove the chance of problems caused by moving things around. But anyway, let's browse to my scratch folder. There it is, and there's the Northwind Traders sample database that I used just now. That's the one that I'm going to use. And now I can continue on the basis of either importing tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, etc. into the current database, which is one option, or linking to the data source by creating a linked table. And that second option is the one that I'm going to use now. So I click on OK. Now I should mention of course that there may be security on that database that will prevent me from even seeing which tables are in it. Obviously there's no security here but this isn't a nice way of hacking into somebody else's database because if they've got it protected you wouldn't even be able to get this far. And you can see the list of all of the available tables in the Northwind Traders database. I'm only going to link to customers at this stage. Clearly if I wanted to link to more than the customers table I could select whichever tables I wanted here. So click on OK and what I now have is a linked table and you should just about be able to see to the left of the icon there that little blue arrow which indicates that this is not a table in this database this is a linked table. Now so far this appears to be good news because it means that you can get data from other access databases pretty easily but as we'll see in a little while there are one or two bits of bad news as well. Now one thing you can do is to rename this table and if I wanted to just remind myself pretty visually and simply that this is the customers table in the Northwind database if I click on rename and perhaps change the name to Northwind customers that will probably remind me where this customer table is kept. If you rename a link table it isn't renamed in the other database itself it's only renamed locally for your use from this database. So first of all let me just open this linked table Northwind customers absolutely fine I can go in I can look at the data I can modify the data that's not a problem let me close it again if I go into design view however I get a warning. Now you can't quite see all of this warning on the screen I'm afraid but you can see enough of it. This table is a linked table whose design can't be modified. Now when it says the design can't be modified that's not quite strictly true. There are very few things that you can do but there are a few. So let's go into design view for this table. You cannot add fields, you can't delete fields, you can't rearrange fields. If you take a typical field say like this one ID the primary key which is auto numbered with that field selected if you look at the properties at the bottom and then look at this message at the bottom right this property cannot be modified in linked tables watch what happens as I click through these properties you'll see that with some of the properties they can be changed and that's because they're actually stored locally this is not a property that is attached uniquely to the particular table and field in the table so there are a small number of things that you can change you can change the caption for example but you can't change for instance whether the field is indexed or not so there are a few things you can change but there aren't many of them now just to recall that within the customers table which is now from this database called the Northwind customers table the ID is the unique identifier of the customer. If I want to now set up a relationship between the customer ID in the table tuple customer contact and this link table I can do that as you'll see in just a moment but there are quite severe restrictions on that relationship they're important to understand so let me just close the Northwind customers linked table go into database tools go into relationships and I'm going to add both of these tables and I'm going to add a relationship between the customer ID here and the Northwind customers ID and notice that the checkboxes here related to referential integrity are greyed out. 
Although I can establish a relationship between the customer ID in my local table and the ID in the linked Northwind customers table, I cannot establish referential integrity. I cannot force a situation, not using this approach anyway, whereby a record for a customer in the customers table in the Northwind database cannot be deleted if I have related records here. To all intents and purposes what this means is that I cannot make the Northwind database depend on my database. So I can set up a relationship which can be very useful when it comes say to doing queries and so on. So if I for example wanted to use some of the additional fields in the Northwind customers table within this application that's fine. But I need to allow for the fact that a record may be deleted in the Northwind database, one of these customers records, that might mean that the corresponding records in the local database, this one, no longer have a linked record. So I can't force referential integrity, which means that although I can use the data in the Northwind database, I can't assume that it's always going to be there. Now that in itself is, if you like, not the end of the world because what that means is you have to develop this database in such a way that you make allowance for that potential issue. So let me just create this relationship. That's fine. You can see the line there. And I may well use this relationship again later on. But it is not a referential integrity type relationship. So basically you now know how to set up a link table and we're going to be doing some more of that a little bit later on. Now let's look at one or two additional things you need to know in relation to this. One of them is that on the external data tab in the import and link group there is a linked table manager which lists the linked tables. Now there will come a time when a linked table or perhaps more than one linked table gets moved, one or two databases get moved and so on and this is the dialogue you use to update your links to allow for that moving. I mentioned earlier on this is one of the greatest problems people get, things get moved around, they lose track and things stop working. You can select one or more of the tables, I've only got one linked table here and then what will happen if I click on OK is that Access will check that it can still find that table in that database and if when I click OK I always want Access to prompt me for a new location so basically if I'm clicking OK here it's because I've moved I can check this box at the bottom here but if you just click on OK now it says all selected link tables were successfully refreshed. So it just made sure everything's still there and fine. Now one other thing to just point out here is that when you use a link table in Access 2013, Access has to get an awful lot of data from another file in order to use that link table. And sometimes if you only want say a subset of that, supposing you only wanted customers of a certain type it might actually be better to set up a query and the query just queries the Northwind database to find the customers of that type and then to use the query as the source of that data. That will avoid access constantly having to reread a whole load of customer data that it doesn't need. So try to filter the data if you can. Try to restrict the amount of data that you're getting out of that external database and using in your local database. And finally on linking to external access databases, if I want to remove this link all I need to do is to right click on it and click delete. Needless to say of course this doesn't actually delete the table in the Northwind database. The owner of the Northwind database might be rather upset if it did. But when I click on delete it basically says do you want to remove the link. I'm not going to remove it on this occasion because I'm going to use it again later on but obviously if you said yes as the note says here if you delete this link you delete only the information Microsoft Access uses to open the table not the table itself. Click on no it's still there I'll use it again later. That's the end of this section I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.